And welcome back. Thanks for joining us on Stop the Movie, I Want to Get Out. We really want to thank you for joining us here on the network of tubes and wires that make up the internets for this show. This is a podcast about some of the most hilariously bad movies Hollywood has ever churned out and really why they're so fascinating when things go so wrong. Very special episode today. Another very special guest. If you live in central New York or northern New York, you know him from your television set. TV's own Nico Tamurian, sportscaster. Whoa. Yeah. I never get an applause like that. Thank it's you. Sportscaster with CNY Central joining us here today. Nico, good to have you here. Alex, it's a pleasure to be here, and I hope I can join you in the future. This is uh, certainly one of the shining moments in my illustrious lack thereof career. We'll At see what, how this one goes, Nico. Yeah. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Right. <clears throat> we'll see what happens. And also, as always, here with Jack Esterbrook. Hello. Brian Mueller. Mm -hmm. Cody Wolf. Uh, I take a bit of an issue that Andy Wolf is big time me and decided not to show up the time I'm here. Well, there is, you know, there was there a rift is, there. Well, there's there's a reason why Andy Wolf isn't here, which we're going to get into at the end of the show. Andy Wolf is preparing for our next show, which is oh, going as to we be, speak, as we speak, he is preparing for it. It's his happening thing. right now. That's right. <laughs> no. oh, oh, little segue there. I like that, Brian. We'll we'll have more on that at the end of this episode, but that is really something very special going to be coming up. <laughs> For this one, we are covering the Matt LeBlanc classic, Ed. Those from, words have never been combined. They, have, they probably never been. I believe it's from 1996. Yes. It certainly um, looked like it was from 1996. It was the year where all the friends got 96. their own movie. Yeah. Yes. yes. And yes. most of them failed miserably. And most yes. of them, well, yes. He, and he by far no the one worst failed one. worse. Than no one failed before. worse no. than he did. Let me tell a quick story about Ed. Uh, my first introduction to it when I was a kid, I actually kind of wanted to see Ed. And these were in the days when you actually called the movie phone and uh, saw what the times were. So. I call the movie phone, and they're going through the movies like, for E.D., <laughs> press 4. <laughs> Even the freaking movie phone guy didn't know about this. Yeah. That's how bad it was. That's pretty bad. It's I pretty remember bad. movie phone. It was like E.T., except E.D. <laughs> it's shot, well, that was their trick. They thought if they called it ED, you'd be reminded of a good Stands film for like extra e. dumb, extra, it's, extra deuce. It's yeah. the unofficial sequel to the Steven Spielberg classic, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. or the prequel. You know. Let's get into this. this is, yeah, this is a movie about sink our teeth in. I mean, just in quick summary, the TV Guide summary would be: Matt LeBlanc is a somewhat professional, a minor league baseball yeah. player whose teammate is a monkey. And he always wears the John Deere hat, so you always remember he's a farm boy. You remember he's a farm Humble boy. farm boy. Uh, we, be, be, really confusing opening, which this is <laughs> yeah, a kid's movie. No Watch it, it very much seemed to me like this movie opened mid-scene. Like, well, it opens up a tryout. Was. It was like, um, yeah, it was like one missed call where it starts with an explosion in the yeah. hospital. It's just like, starts with a baseball tryout. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not, not like, they don't show you who he is. There's no introduction. He doesn't drive to the tryout. There's not even like an establish, establishing shot. It's a shot of feet. It's just yeah. like the clean, yeah. <laughs> and then, and then another shot of like him walking to the, the mound. There's no like introduction or anything. And then randomly yeah. they're like, oh God, this kid won't be able to throw. He's got a John Deere hat on, yeah. you know? Well, they established that Matt LeBlanc has never played baseball before. We, we should so, really okay. highlight this point. Did I mean, anyone else notice I, that? You know, I didn't really pick that up when I was watching. It's one of, it's like they're trying to be the natural, but like after, right. you know, the naturals all get up there on the train with the lady who like shoots him and whatnot. But I was just really confused by the whole thing. You're right. It picks up mid scene. He's laying in the bed of bloodhounds, like licking them all over and Suddenly, yeah. now he's going to be a professional baseball player. But, yeah, that, he but that comes afterwards. That's the thing. That's actually I think, after. Yeah. I think it, that's true. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah basically, yeah. he just throws for some scouts, and they like him, and they sign him to a How did he even know there was a pitch. tryout? I mean, they, they, they don't I'm not it. sure there was a tryout. And they don't explain how yeah. they know that he's never played baseball think, before. Does he even he say says it? He says it. He says he's never played before, but somehow he's on the mound ahead of his And only his mom has seen him pitch. Yeah. I think the confusion among the five of us shows just how poor we this was explained, and yeah, and th that's the least of this movie. Well, you know, they have baseball tryouts in random small rural towns all the time. Oh, yeah. the time. We just don't know about them. They We're not baseball insiders. Yeah. They sign baseball players uh, based on one pitch. That's based right. on one pitch, and it yeah. never, yeah. So Matt LeBlanc plays. I I can't remember the rest of his character's name. They just call him the Deuce. Well, his name Deuce. is his name is uh, because of Cooperstown. His name oh, is yeah, Cooper. Cooper. Yeah, right. his, name is, his name is Jack Cooper, an All American yeah. baseball player. Jack the Deuce Jack the Deuce Cooper. Cooper. Yep. Yeah. And he lives on a farm. <laughs> the deuce, huh? The yeah. deuce. Well, that's it's cool. hilarious. It's funny. The more you think about so it, he, the he, he it lives gets. on a farm. As, as as Nico so accurately described, he sleeps with his dog, who licks him awake. 
Um, he wears sleep. a John Deere hat. He's pretty as generically bland Midwest American farm boy movie version of that that you could possibly think of. He's a really nice, honest guy. He's, you know, he dresses in a lot of denim. He wears the, 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 the John Deere hat and did loves anybody, baseball. Did anybody else feel, I felt like as I was watching this movie, that at times it wanted to be like a throwback to those live action Disney movies, Whoa, like oh, the yeah. Fred McMurray, and, yes, Dean Jones, yes, like yeah. Flubber, you know, yeah, Gus, or the, the Mule that Kicks kind of Football, thing. the Nutty Professor, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, those kind of live action movies. But then at other times, is There's some really not heavy, like a throwback. Yeah. It's I mean, a little like, bit more PG thirteen, right? Points. Yeah, I mean, it jumps sophomore humor. It jumps between you know, touching yeah. child, uh, uh, children's entertainment to oh like, what? Sophomore what did you just humor. say? Well, there were uh, an attempt, an attempt at touching childhood. Let's but, not get into that channel. Well, humor. Oh, well, I not, not scary. Never mind. There, and, and this, <laughs> this, this scene here with him waking up in the farmhouse is the first evidence I think that this movie was miscut or something because. This scene feels like it should have been before. I think he's even wearing the same outfit before the opening scene. Right. Yeah. Where he wakes up, he goes downstairs, and his parents are like, "Oh, it's the big day," and blah blah blah. And like the, his as, father throws a baseball. It almost him. like skipped. Yeah. And as if you're he's right. a good yeah. point. So he I goes. Think you're right. This should have come before. The I think movie. They, yeah. The movie opens at tryouts. Then you get the opening credits. He throws right, this as he throws a hundred and twenty mile fastball or something like that. Right. He makes the team. Then he wakes up in the morning. I gotta get ready to go for the tryouts. Well, he doesn't literally. Say he doesn't that. say but, tryouts. But because, you're, that you're, right. He leaves, you're right. He leaves the house and they're like, "Oh, it's your big day, blah blah." And the next thing is he's in uh, Oregon or wherever, and he's like actually playing for the team. So it's like that wasn't the big all day. the while. Yeah. Like, Where the hell is the monkey? That's yeah. the whole reason I'm watching. Where's the monkey? Yeah. Oh, you're yeah, gonna be waiting for a yeah, while. Like, I don't want to see Matt LeBlanc yeah. throw a fictitious 180 uh, mile an hour fastball. 125 to be more accurate. Yeah, yeah. He, he I want to progressed into 125. It was like 105. At yeah, point. and then eventually just goes up and up and up. Yeah. So we move right to this kid who, uh, by his own description, Matt LeBlanc has never played baseball. He's now starting for a minor league right. team. That's pretty impressive. They were really. That was yeah. a great tryout. I yeah, mean, that really that pitch really impressed me. Yeah, he's that now a starting pitcher. You know, that's I think where my sports testing expertise comes in here. I don't yeah. think that's ever happened. Um, and I think that's something that... That's why they made a movie about it. I think, I if, Brian, I think, I don't if, think if Brian if Mueller could... Play baseball either. If they could see Brian Mueller pitch, it would happen, but... Well, I had a brief uh, minor league career, oh, but we'll get Brian into that later. Really baseball reference. Yeah. Um, and it's then revealed, we get to meet... I forget the actor's name. Is it Jack Warden who plays... Yes, the yeah, the crusty yes. manager. The crusty oh, manager. He's in the replacements. And that's one thing, okay. not to interrupt the point. Yeah, that's a good point. There are several... Minor stars from other movies in this film. Of course, he was in the to remind you of better sports. The movies? assistant manager is, and I still know what you did last summer. He's the hotel manager oh. down in. He's in a lot Jim of stuff. Caviz- Jim Caviezel's in it. Jim, Jim Caviezel, Caviezel is in it. Yep. Yep. Zach Ward. The umpire. Zach, Zach Ward. Oh, Zach Ward. From yeah. Christmas Story is in it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. How that career is a flip. Jim Caviezel had to play second fiddle to Matt LeBlanc. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back on that one, he's gonna remember that for the rest of his life. Some casting director somewhere is like, whoa, boy. Whoops! <laughs> and he had to play second fiddle to a monkey. And he gets cut. caught. He's the only player that gets caught. Yes, <laughs> he, he is. It's true. And he's like, okay, I guess. Now, yeah. can I just explain right now? Uh, 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 don't get too attached to the characters. There's very little characterization in this film whatsoever. It's about a monkey. Oh yeah. Well, the monkey's character progressed. As so, like, yeah, yeah, the monkey is an arc. So to move ahead, yeah. we'll the get on to that. Matt LeBlanc is playing baseball. He's He's a choke artist, pretty much. You can't. Well, he throws a curveball all the time he's, when he yeah. has a hundred and ten mile an hour fastball. So, so yeah. he's got this. Now, so apparently, there's no pitching coach on this team but. to actually <laughs> tell him you could throw harder than any human in the history of baseball. No, just throw that hanging curve again. Why not? The one that you suck so at, and that, that one guy that always hits, which is like his nemesis. The guy who the spit tobacco, tobacco from the so batter's yeah. box to the, the mound on his shoe. No, wait a minute. Yeah, was yeah. the was the tobacco ban already in place by ninety five? No, no, no. Oh, okay, I was confused no, by that. That no. that could have been a rules violation. That's a good point, Jack. Okay, yeah. but so he <laughs> he, he he's a choke artist. The team's unhappy with him. He's getting crap in the the, the uh, locker room. So then the, the the Weasley, not the owner, but the, the owner's son, who's somehow in charge comes in, and he's got a plan to, to spike ticket sales. Now, wait a second, Cody. You say he had a plan. How did we know it was a plan? Because the plan was written on the packet. <laughs> oh, that's how we <laughs> know it was. Oh, that's right. The <laughs> big plan. gold letters. The, the plan. plan. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So then, like... so then there's a game after the after the, the manager reads the plan. They, they he, don't tell he, you what the plan is. He approaches Matt LeBlanc, and he says... I have a job for you. I need to pick. I need you to pick someone up from the bus station. And he says, "Oh man, really? Why me?" And he says, "You're just gonna do it. Go." Yeah. So he goes to the it's your bus lucky station. Day. It's your lucky day. 
So he goes to the bus station, and the bus driver's like, oh yeah, he's on the bus, go pick him up. Yeah. And he, Why is everyone talking like a no 1940s point, like news hawk? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, at no point does anyone tell him that he's picking up a chimpanzee. A monkey. Like, Nobody. Well, that would ruin the and surprise. We, yeah. And the movie then goes, it starts going to I mean, they wouldn't like, get like a zookeeper to, or, or some kind of a professional animal handler to pick up this animal. No. He sends this doofus, who's never played baseball before, has been the starting pitcher on one game, and now he's going to go pick up a chimpanzee from a bus station. Not... From like an airport or 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 uh, oh they can't have chimps somewhere fly. where they delivered with a, okay, good point but you know somewhere where you think he could logically deliver an ape to no a bus station they gave the yeah, ape a bus, bus ticket it's minor league baseball they can't yeah. afford planes and stuff they got to do what they can and, I, I, and I guess it takes I forever like they just there must be like two lines of script for what then takes the movie oh, ten minutes to accomplish like I'm sure the oh, script gosh, just yeah, said like goofiest, uh, like Matt LeBlanc drives Ed home. It goofiness well, first there's shenanigans, the first there's like five hijinks. minutes of him trying to get the, the, the chimp into the truck and then trying the to get in the truck. With like, with like generic wah, 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 yeah. wah, 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 the sound effects going. in this movie are ridiculous. Oh god, yes. Yeah. This is just a, a a buffet of just zing, woo! <laughs> and you're not kidding. <laughs> Those are sound effects. Yeah, 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 Someone, Someone, I think the sound the editors Someone, may have been yeah. nominated for an Academy Someone Award just get, for how much time they had Someone to put in the Someone gets hit show. on the head with a baseball and there's literally the tweeting bird sound effect. Yeah. That's what kind of movie this is. Well, and another point, I'm going to jump in just a little. At the point that the general manager, whoever, sees Ed playing baseball and his eyes are replaced with dollars. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I groaned so loud at that. That was the point where I was laying on it. Rocked my head back. Yeah. Down it was the wall. like you I'm have like, oh. limited funds to spend on this movie. <laughs> yeah, like, the CG was <laughs> expensive back then. Yeah. And now we got eight hundred dollars left. Let's throw some dollar signs on his eyes. <laughs> We have to further the point that this guy knows that Ed is a positive revenue stream for the team. Yeah. So apparently, I guess the backstory is this is Mickey Mantle's chimpanzee. I have no idea. That, yeah, what? That, uh, they yeah. said yeah. this is, make, this is hey, ladies Mickey and gentlemen, Man- Mickey Mantle's monkey. And then everyone on the team, instead of being like, whoa, whoa, whoa chimps can be dangerous. You got a chip on the field, man? What the hell's is up? Is that wrestling? No, them. they immediately yeah. are like, Hey man, welcome to the team. And they start shaking his hand like he's a person. And they start patting him on the head and well, saying, he comes, Hey, welcome to the team, rookie. Punching him on the arm. Him, yeah. And they yeah. start wrestling around. Yay, we like the new teammate. So well, then, no it, one, then it gets what's it? I was just say no one seems to think it's weird that this like this chimpanzee is wearing like jeans right. and like a jacket and a hat. <laughs> and, and underwear too. And it's underwear. underwear. <laughs> like who's <laughs> dressing this monk underwear. this chimpanzee? He dresses yeah. himself, Brian. Yeah. Come on, that was so, a given. So, yeah. No, no, they introduced this a It gets it gets decided that um, by Chubb, the the, man, the coach, the, the coach, coach yeah, he uh, he decides that Matt LeBlanc is going to live with the monkey. Yeah, so because he drew be, the short yeah. straw. Yes, he drew he drew so. the short straw. But they do this crazy cheesy thing where he's like, <clears throat> whenever people reach for the short straw, because yeah. he wants Matt LeBlanc to live with the ape. So why the hell go through the facade so of drawing they, lots? Why not just tell Matt LeBlanc, you know what, you're picking up the Because that was my other thing. I'm like, why are we watching this scene? Yeah. Why yeah. is this four-minute scene of a staged I really think the first cut of this yeah. movie was 45 minutes. And <laughs> yeah. like, crap, we need like another 45. Yeah, everything feels filled out. <laughs> so he goes, the monkey goes home with, uh, with, with Matt LeBlanc. <clears throat> and you're introduced to the, the, the female lead. Finally, yeah, love interest. Look at like twenty minutes into the movie, her daughter, the super hot single mom who lives yeah. next door, who Matt LeBlanc doesn't want to have dinner with her because he's got to take care of the mom. Because he's I'm in not, a slump. I'm, good, and I'm he's not doing well on, on my team. He I got to focus on baseball oh, right now. Right, right. right. This super hot neighbor of his asks him, "She's like, oh, do you want to have dinner?" He's like, "Oh, I'm going to take a rain check until I work out of this slump." And she looks at him like, "Are you crazy?" Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. And not, not to mention the fact right. that he's got a trained monkey following him into his apartment. This isn't weird. Yeah. I'm a single yeah. mom living in an apartment. There's some weirdo living upstairs with a monkey, but I think Bring he's cute, so I'll, I'll give it a pass. Yeah, somehow this movie exists in a universe where no one really thinks twice about monkeys being dressed and walking around like with humans. Clearly, the people who made this movie never saw rogue chimps. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So, so they're making rogue chimps. I know of it. That'll scare yeah. you straight, man. Then they go right. into the apartment, and that's when the hijinks that... Oh, oh that's when the movie really and takes when he says hijinks... When he says hijinks... The toilet when, humor, the... When, yep. Cody says hijinks, he literally means stereotypical, uh, cliched, goofy, slapstick well, here, here's comedy. One of... I think this is the scene where one... The line that I laughed the hardest at in this movie... Yes. And Jack and I watched this together, we both just laughed out loud, was... So, all this stuff's going on. The monkey 
decides he has I to I know where you're going with this, but just go on. <laughs> the, 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 the chimp decides he has to go to the bathroom. Matt LeBlanc wants him to go outside and use the sandbox for some reason. And a children's so, sandbox in a playground, so, not a cat box. So the, the chimp's like, no, I'm, he, he goes in the bathroom. You get the fart sounds in the bathroom, and but can we? But, and and Metal Bong's pounding on the door. You can't, you can't crap in there. And then there's shaving cream sound effects. I think and it's the air freshener. He's, he's like, oh, air okay. I thought it was like, like he was shaving, but, but he didn't. But it's really like I was really uncomfortable during this and several other scenes. Whoever wrote this movie, I'm, I'm imploring you. If you're listening to this podcast, seek help. You have phobias involving the, and a weird, unhealthy fascination with the bathroom. Yes. Because there's a lot of... Well, there's of, something else. There's another... Yeah, yeah, later on. Oh, there's my God. There's a lot of, like, but, really uncomfortableness with yes, the bathroom. Yes, but yes. And how Ed demonstrates yeah. he has to go to the bathroom, yeah, oh, which God. is Does really, a little dance while grabbing oh, his crotch. Yeah, it is yeah. more suitable for an R-rated movie. So, so the, the, yeah. So the monkey, the chimp, comes out of the bathroom. He's, he's swinging around like a chimp. He's, you know... Making a mess. Matt LeBlanc decides, oh, I, you know, he just can't take a hit. He goes into his bedroom. Here we go. And he hears, he hears some crashing sounds in, in the living room. There, there's a knock on the door. More zany sound effects. Yeah, there's a knock on the door. He opens the door. The monkey, like, hands him a lamp or something. Yeah. That's, that's broken. So he shuts the door. <laughs> he, he leans against the door and he goes, I'm going to spank that monkey. <laughs> What a great! It feels like there's like an awkward pause. What, what, what a great catchphrase for a kids movie. Oh yeah, this I is know a it. kids I movie. I am gonna, gonna spank, spank that, that monkey. monkey. And then he just walks oh. off screen. <laughs> wah wah wah! Wipe oh to next God. scene. A little humor for all the parents and. I was in disbelief. <laughs> I was in disbelief when I heard that line. So I'm yeah. like, that, yeah. is, that does not belong in. in no, a kids no. Movie. And that's no, you know what? You know what? As you started to explain, I was. I was offended by this line because as a chimpanzee, Ed isn't a monkey. He's an ape. That's what bothered me about that line the most, Cody. Yeah, that is. Can I ask another question? <laughs> I'm just... not who who would think it's okay to feed a chimpanzee dog, dog food? food? Yeah, right, yes, right. Feed yes, dog food. right. He's like, who, who would you think eat it was, the dog it's, food? It's, I'm going to oh. eat the TV dinner now, and I know yeah. TV dinners aren't that much better than dog food, but you expect who would feed the but ape like something. dry dog? Who would say like? Oh, especially since he. He grew up on a farm. I even know how to feed animals. You, I it, it's exactly, right. exactly. Yeah, I mean, you logic would, like, error. What kind of farm do you? Go, are they feeding the cows? Dog well, if, if I had, by that's the way, why Matt LeBlanc was I moving had, away. That farm was going downhill quickly. <laughs> if I had like, a chimpanzee that was taking that's care of, that's some more Purina for the cows. <laughs> if, I was at, oh, if I had a chimpanzee that I was taking care of, and I was in a grocery store, the first thing that come to my mind to buy would be bananas, at least. Instead yeah. of dog food. I wouldn't yeah. go to the dog food aisle and go yeah. to the fruit aisle. I even question yeah. what Matt LeBlanc was eating with that microwave dinner. That yeah. looked disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Totally and then they get into this fight over the food. Like, the ape is, like, trying to tell him. Like, Ed is trying to tell him, uh, 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 you know, hey, I don't want to eat dog food. You eat people food. Let me eat people food, too. So, it basically, because he can't articulate this verbally, of course, he does a lot of pantomiming and a lot of, you know, signing and all that. So he grabs Matt LeBlanc, throws him to the floor, and starts shoving dog food in his mouth, to which Matt LeBlanc is finally like, all right, all right, I'll eat it, I'll eat it. And it's like, what? And then he's yeah. like, <laughs> and then, then then Ed eats the food from the TV dinner, and he, he jumps on the couch and starts watching TV, which is a King Kong or something with an ape in it. And Matt LeBlanc's like, all right, fine, two can play at that game. You want to play hardball? What? What's going on here? So, yeah, because yeah. he's going to make him sleep outside. Yeah. Yeah. And then that breaks his door. Yeah. But that's just, that's and then another yeah, he breaks. Comes okay, <laughs> here comes <laughs> another scene. Friends, here comes yeah. another scene. Okay, so the, the ape is watching, conveniently, an episode of Friends. Conveniently, a scene where Jennifer Aniston is talking to Marcel, the little monkey that the David Schwimmer character had on that show, right? Yeah. So then... He, because of course Matt LeBlanc is in it, it's 95, Friends was the hottest show on TV, so of course they had to reference it. Hey, remember uh, Matt LeBlanc from Friends? Something good, or at least better than Ed? Anyway, so he kicks Ed out because Ed has eaten his food and shoved dog food in his face. He says, all right, let's play hardball. Of course, a baseball reference. A lot of baseball cliches. It's a baseball movie after all. So he has the ape sleep outside. So Ed knocks on the door, of course, typical cliche fashion. LeBlanc opens the door, and he's, ooh, shivering. And he's like, ha-ha, uh -huh, ain't gonna work. It's summertime, slams the door. Knock, 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 opens the door. You just went to the bathroom. He's doing his little... Again, yeah. doing the bathroom The dance. bizarre bathroom dance, thank it's you. It's very uncomfortable. And then yeah. he shuts the door, and then the, the ape, because you know, apes are proportionately stronger than humans, kicks the door down. Matt LeBlanc turns around. No, he doesn't turn around. <laughs> he opens his legs, and <laughs> what? Looks between his legs. Whoa, like, did he just kick the door down? And then the ape scrambles in at high speed, knocks him over, jumps on the couch, 
and goes yeah, to sleep. Now the ape is getting violent and, then and destructive. They, and, yeah. and, 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 and it's <laughs> like... Huh? Now, I thought this was like a prequel to the prequel of Planet of the Apes by <laughs> yeah. some of these scenes. <laughs> well, boys, right. That's how they took over that's the world. They they played take over, yes. Guys, we should have recut this movie to the rise of the Planet of the Apes footage. <laughs> yes. We totally, there, you could totally do that, too. Him kicking there down the door yeah. and stuff and swinging on yeah. the... Yeah. Like, yeah. There were, yeah, moments, we there were moments when I watched when I was watching this last night that I did think of Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Not to we mention show. the fact that he when, he when he's playing third base, of course, which I'm skipping ahead a little bit, no, he go throw, ahead, yeah. He throws at the first base, and it's like so fast that it burns a hole in the first well, base. Yeah, let, mitt. yeah. Well, let's not get. Not that's an error, but let's you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's get into that. They're, they they have practice the next day. Yeah. And and the it monkey goes, shows it actually goes to a game the next day. Yeah, well, we didn't even, game, but no. we didn't talk about the practice. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. There's not there's, much. There's not much well, baseball playing in this movie. Just a lot of baseball cliches. There's a lot of talking about baseball. Yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot of right. cheesy. We're superstitious, so we all have our own different baseball luck superstitions. Yeah. So Ed, in the middle of a game, because the rest of the players are in a slump, Ed is in in a, in a savvy managerial move. Ed is promoted from mascot to third base. <laughs> well, here, here's what I, I loved about that. I went, I wanted to hit on something. The practice before they played that game, when Ed, when Nico just mentioned, when Ed like makes the throw to to first base and everything, when Ed first shows up, uh, you know they're talking about him like being the mascot and everything, and then the manager like hints that like he might want to play right. Ed at some point. Yeah, that's never As clear. if, like, the yeah. manager has the expectation that and when a monkey play, comes yeah. to the team, he can play. And even Matt LeBlanc's like, you don't actually think he can play. And he's like, uh, I don't know. Like, <laughs> this guy's like some 80-year-old manager. Yeah. Like, yeah. You'd think he'd have better sense than to have a third baseman yeah. that is not a human he being. Gives, yeah, he gives it up. It's like, hey, I'm not ruling out any options here. Anything can happen. Hey, you don't know. What? It would, it would be a great third baseman. If someone know. brings an animal on the team who doesn't have the expectation that they can plug him into the lineup at some point. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then, right. then at the, the game when they decide to put him in, it comes another moment that I thought was way too heavy for this movie. And Nico brought it up earlier before we, the recording, uh, where yes, the he brings the, the the ape onto the field, and the two umps are like arguing on whether or not they let him play. And there's a, a black ump and a white ump, and the white ump says something along the lines of, uh, uh, "We let all kinds of people play, but blah blah blah." And the black ump, of course you know, is offended by this. He says, oh, thank you for letting you know, everyone play. Blah, blah. It's like this really heavy racial moment that's yeah, it, way too, this too suddenly, much. Really. This this suddenly, oh, 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 really? You're going to let the ape play suddenly. like you let black people play? You racist, get off the mound. Yeah, it's like, it's like what? Way yeah. too heavy. It really? It, 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 suddenly we got a scene out of do the right thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Where's Spike Lee when you need him? You got a scene out of the movie. Jackie Robinson story. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's why, after the scene, I, I'm like, just, wait, wait, is this an allegory for Jackie Robinson? Because that's, well, that's what it felt like. Exactly. For the adults in the theater 16 years ago, they were like, are you kidding me? I brought my kid to this. And to the kids there, you have over no their idea heads. what's going on. Yeah, like, yeah. kids are like, is there going to be a They don't know the politics. Is there going to be a race riot yeah. in this movie? Yeah. What yeah. side are we on if there's a race riot? <laughs> there's there's <laughs> fires being set in left field suddenly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The like, this is bad, not even, I mean, it's, it's, we're laughing. This is bad, not even on a comical level. That was just really, I'm surprised really they heavy. didn't get in trouble for it was that. Incredibly, yeah, it, was really it was incredibly heavy because at, at times this movie will go from kids film to like a PG-13. To really self-aware, poignant. But then this is an attempt to make a poignant message I mean, guys i'm gonna make this a true story according to wikipedia i believe this was cut out of the dvd because i didn't see this according to wikipedia in the theatrical Wait, they actually cut, cut something out of the they did there's apparently a scene where ed gives an opposing ball player the finger apparently that was <laughs> with his feet or with his hand oh, no with his hand i mean which really i mean well, that's what <laughs> we were talking about it. we were talking about it earlier this, this movie jumps between you know the goofiest kids movie you'll ever see and, and an adult movie where, you know, the coach is swearing at the players and that happens apparently. There's a yeah. scene where everybody gets trashed. There's, we'll get to that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. It's, it's yeah. just, it, it doesn't know what it wants to be. Yeah. That was after the cut day. When, that was after cut day. That's right. When That's everybody's right. We'll afraid they're going to get cut, but only no, one player does. No, yeah, yeah. And I want to bring in Nico's Let's expertise get... in this. Nico, can you explain to me the logic behind mid-season cut Yeah, cut day. day like it's um, in the season. They're, they're saying like, oh, we're, we're deep in the pennant race and blah, blah, And it's like, oh, and it's well, cut day. Hey, listen, as you've gathered from this discussion, this movie is just all about the facts. And <laughs> anything that's in this movie can be really taken as sports gospel. If you watch this movie, you know the sport of baseball. Oh, yeah. I mean, who works. doesn't know about cut day? I think it's actually exactly. coming up for the Chiefs, um, like June 20th, maybe. <laughs> yeah. And the worst part about it is if there were 
getting back to being serious, if there were some random cut day in the middle of the season, which does not exist in any sport, you can release somebody, but whatever. It's not yeah. a cut day. You know, of the 30 or whatever guys are on the team, they only cut one player. They cut one guy. There's only one guy, and it's Jim Caviezel. And it's good like, to see they make the decision yeah. based no, on no, flipping now, the coin. And why did he give that huge, that whole speech about, oh, you know, someone's going to be cut, you know, all these people, you know, and then cut one guy? Why not just take that guy in your office and say, look, hey. <laughs> it's not working out. Let me, let me, let me say something. I don't think it's fair. I don't think there's one shot of Jim Caviezel playing on the field in this movie. No. And I don't even think I knew the character's name until he was cut. And when they when he shows he got cut, everyone's really sympathetic, like, "Oh man, Scooter's been cut," or whatever his I name is. I had, Dizzy. Look, I had to look it Dizzy's up on IMDb. Cut. I didn't yeah, understand yeah, exactly. And I was yeah. like, "So you're cutting out Jim Caviezel, who I understand this is before he he did better work, and maybe they didn't realize that he was a better actor." But they they cut him from the movie. He leaves the movie. He leaves the team. Then they all go out and they decide to have a drink, right? So they all get drunk, and by way, Ed... Again. By the way, Ed is in the bar, too. I don't know yeah. Ed, <laughs> how he got in the Ed bar. now is the designated driver. I again, know. this is a kid's movie. Yeah. They're yeah. all they get, bombed, yeah. and a monkey is Matt their LeBlanc, designated Matt driver. Now it's absolutely trash. And now, and, now, and now the ape drags him to the car, takes the keys... And drives circles. And drives around in circles in high speed like, while a meatloaf song s- plays. This is like something out of the Doors movie, where like, <laughs> it's it's like, like I felt like I was tripping on acid in this scene, where he's yeah. driving and like there's all these like fast zoom in well, and zoom well, out it's, it's also yeah. like that rear projection you know where the car is sitting on a track and, act, yeah. and and grips are pushing it so it looks like it's driving there's a screen in the background but it's at high speed Whoa, ah, and everything is going crazy and there's lots of scrambling sound effects and this oh meatloaf yeah. song is playing and right? can we talk about well, what happens two. when they get back to the also, apartment also time, time shift oh, here God. it's oh, daytime yeah. when they leave the bar so oh, what yeah, were they yeah. drinking until like what did they get started like at two and he's bombed at like seven at night? Well, based on what I saw, Ed was driving so fast he shifted the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like in the Millennium Falcon going hyperspeed. Then when they get, yeah. then when back, they get the back, they go to bed and it's night again. But we get but again another scene in the bathroom. This yes, I, oh yes, here we go. Jack and I were laughing so was, hard at this. Yes. Okay. So okay. <laughs> So Ed is now. Now again, at least it's a positive message for kids, right? If you're gonna go out and drink, have a designated have a driver. Drive. But it's okay if that designated driver is a monkey, whatever. So they go <laughs> out, they that. drink because Jim Caviezel, the unknown whatever baseman, is cut, right? Okay. They drink. Ed drives him home in this wacky scene. Yet he parks the truck perfectly, even though they show that he's driving dangerously because, well, he's a monkey. Let's face it. So then, and he might have been drunk too. He somehow gets Matt LeBlanc upstairs, and then the next shot, it just jump cuts. Ed waddles into the bathroom, whips it out, and starts peeing, standing up like a person would, in the toilet, right? Okay, I'm like, this is not necessary, this is weird, and then all of a sudden, Matt LeBlanc in a drunken stupor, hey buddy, move over, and stands (laughs) next to him, peeing in the same toilet. Yeah, they're they're basically crossing streams. They're just crossing streams, which if you know from watching Ghostbusters, you just never do, because you get total plutonic reversal. Anyway, so this is just so bizarre that they're peeing together, and it's not like... It's not like Matt LeBlanc was peeing and then Ed came in and he's like, no, wait your turn, wait your turn. Oh, God, this is so awkward. No, it was even more awkward because he's normal. Like, yep, yeah. we pee together, me and the safe. It was a right. bonding moment. That's how they got into bed together. The roommates then they pee climb together, into bed together, together. And then they turn and face each other. And then Matt LeBlanc like, says something to him like, are you still awake? I have expected them to kiss. This was so creepy. I, I well, mean, they, we were almost saw a monkey spanking scene. <laughs> that's yeah. right, we did. Th- oh thank God. you very much for putting that image in my mind. I, have, I, I don't think I've ever Tonight. seen another movie a kids movie or otherwise that had more people going to the bathroom in it, yeah. it yeah. it's it's true. unhealthy unhealthy so then Matt, can i just make one more point about jim caviezel sure. yes and I when you're a baseball too. player and you're on a team with a monkey and you get <laughs> cut and the monkey doesn't it's gotta do something to your pride it right might there. be time to start finding another career <laughs> Well, no, Brian. You must have been seeing that tag and looking over at the monkey. You're like, really? And the guy, the farm guy who's never played baseball, who with his like, dream dream gets to stay too. My dream is to meet Jim Caviezel and just ask him that question. So, do you think your character was that was messed up? I'm gonna fact- play Jesus someday, so you all can suck it. Well, let me, let me play devil's advocate for a minute here. I think there was a conspiracy against Jim Caviezel's character. Now, how did he get cut? But the guy who Ed replaces at third base make the team. Or was yeah, that Jim Caviezel? Well, here's the other thing. How Remember the they... guy at third base that like, drops all the foul yeah, balls? Could yeah. they afford to cut anybody? Because as far as I could tell by this movie, Nico, if you can check oh, with yeah. you on this, 
it appeared they only had two pitchers. <laughs> They had right. Matt LeBlanc and a closer. That, that, that the guy was in And the closer, the all of a sudden, later. from yes. the bar scene on, he's like and a, he's guy. like a bad yeah. guy who doesn't care. I don't care that you've been really cut. Developed. All I care about is beating you is the better picture. And then, they never Yeah, that story never, never went up. anywhere. They yeah. never, he's the only other pitcher on the team. Eh, put stuff. another urinating scene in. We'll and now LeBlanc started for the sixth game. His arm's really rubbery today. So after after the the peeing and the sleeping with the monkey scene, there, uh, this is another scene I think was out of order too, but another moment that I laughed really hard at was Matt LeBlanc is jogging. He's got to keep in shape. He's he we comes pitches back, every day. Comes back to his apartment, and uh, here we go. He's by the way, he's completely fine. He's not hung over or anything. Uh, oh, there were there he, was. He's jogging while but, while using a waiting. hand like one of those hand squeezing a hand yeah. Yeah. So a he, hand gripper. Yeah. Yeah. He, he comes back to the apartment. The little girl of, oh, wait, wait, of the actually, love interest. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do a line uh, reading. Let me go. Have Brian, come over here and Cody. Right. Let me have you set this up. Brian okay. and I are gonna do. Who's a line uh, reading. who's who? I'm here. I'll be the little girl. You can be Matt LeBlanc. So okay, the, Cody, the, Cody. This set little girl this up. has the entire movie. This little girl is trying to get Matt LeBlanc's character to date his her mother. So he he comes running up, and this little girl sitting on the uh, picnic table outside the apartment, and this is what happens. Hey, Deuce. Yes. Are you gay? What? It would be okay. No biggie. <laughs> no, I'm not. Then why don't you like my mom? <laughs> <laughs> that was just another one of those. This is in a. Oh, and kids you bring movie it, Is it because of me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really? No, it's not because of you. And he puts his arm around her and they have this touching moment, right? And yeah. then it cuts to the game the next day, and everyone's hung over from partying the night before, including Matt LeBlanc, right. and that's why I think who was... not hours before was jogging, completely healthy, was yeah. clear-headed enough to give nice... Well, now he's, like nice question, that's that's now he's questioning his sexual orientation. He's going through a tough time. Kids who watch this movie must have had a that's lot of never, really uncomfortable I would questions. never show this movie to my kid. Because no. like, I don't think so, no. Yeah. Maybe like 13 like, year That old. felt like a moment in like an adult... Comedy, like romantic like comedy, like a Jerry Maguire kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like the, I, <laughs> not, not in a goofy movie about a monkey playing baseball. Yeah, that doesn't right. that doesn't belong in the same movie with money coming out of a guy's eyes. You know, right. there are so many <laughs> points in this movie, and I watched. I'll admit, I watched it after work last night, so I watched it from maybe twelve thirty to like, you know, two some tw- two something in the morning. I'm like, man. It's a good thing I'm really good friends with Alex, Cody, Brian, and Jack because I would have turned this movie off like five <laughs> times already. Oh, your your sacrifice is appreciated, yeah, sir. Welcome to the podcast. Yeah, well, your welcome. sacrifice is appreciated. Oh welcome. no, I, I was like, I, like you know, listen. Sometimes there's funny movies, and I've listened to other podcasts like like you know over the top. Like I could enjoy, you know, you at least watch it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But this is just so ridiculous on so many levels. This was I'm a like, tougher go than like, some of the other movies. I, I can't we've watched. watch this, but I have to. Yeah, this this they one felt was, like homework. Yeah, yeah this did. one did. I, this I one was, was a deuce, if if you might say. Oh, hey! <laughs> yes. Wait, hold on. If in the spirit of this movie, that needs like a comic effect after, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Sing. The including the scenes, including cliche scenes where toupees get shot off of people's yeah. heads. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. people slip and slide. Dong. Wait. So to, to jump forward, it turns out Ed is not only an ex- uh, an excellent third baseman. Yes. He is also a professional babysitter. Ed yes. is then called on to babysit the neighbor's little girl while Matt LeBlanc... After the daughter oh, called God. out yeah. Matt LeBlanc and then yeah. he finally asked her He's like, oh, jeez, I better ask her. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want this... Oh, no. gu- I don't want rumors wow. starting to get spread. Yeah. Wow, that guilt trip was pretty serious. <laughs> I gotta do something here. Ed will babysit. <laughs> totally natural. And He's in a way, polo, where's the mom? Like the Tommy mom? Hilfiger. Oh, it's okay. This chimpanzee can watch my Mother daughter. I mean, that chimpanzee is a professional well, baseball player. You're going to let a creepy chimpanzee watch my daughter? That's Wait, that's okay. There's a line when they're on the date. She says to Matt LeBlanc, oh, should I call? I'm sure I'm just being an overprotective mom. No, no, you're not. No, you're your child's with a monkey. Yeah, that, that, your child. I mean, I don't think you're being overprotective. <laughs> yeah, that's, and pretty of course, that's about as underprotective as you could get. You get the very, very cliched scenes with with the monkey and and the girl uh, trying trying you know playing dress up and he's oh, dressed yeah. up like Madonna and, and <laughs> he's voguing. And, 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 and it's just... Let's let's take let's take account of the issues that have come up so far in this movie: bathroom issues, homosexuality, race relations, cross dressing. I mean, we're really parental responsibility. Yeah, some yeah. pretty heavy duty. I was half stuff expecting to see up. like Pulp Fiction on the TV when he was babysitting the kid. And even yeah. if you wanted to, if you'd have to really, really, really dig deep to find this one. But there are a few shots that this woman like works at a diner, 
elements of oh, no, struggling like as a single shot. mom. Wait, where does she? Where did, did you? It's notice, one shot. Did you notice where she works? The coffee shop. Where? Yeah. Did you oh, notice? No. Did you notice the name of the coffee it's shop? It's not Central Perk, is it? No, the name of the coffee what? shop is coffee shop that's, <laughs> that's the kind of production design you get on i thought you were going to say it was one from friends wow that's that's the coffee worse. shop that's really it's worse. a small amount of town they can get away well, with i really envision the director shop. being like the production design people being like Phil. all right we got we got to build this coffee shop set what what's the name of the coffee shop uh, i don't know, you it, know just, what? it just says coffee shop i think in the, the director in the was being consistent because the plan was called the plan right yeah, yeah. so why not have the coffee shop be called the coffee shop why yeah. not so well, going back to them, you know, Ed babysitting the little girl, one scene that I just, I was shaking my head like, what is going on here? That happened like 20 times is when they're making popcorn and it just like, okay, a yeah. bag of popcorn, as we all know, is, fits oh, in the, boy. in the bag of popcorn. Yeah. Well, magically they pull out the bag and popcorn is just streaming it's like through a never the ending flow. Like it's this portal to some other popcorn dimension. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ah, like popcorn going through the microwave and it fills the whole damn kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what is going on? And then, and then the laws of physics are being well, yeah. And then you get the crazy cartoon scene, and as I knew as soon as I saw, um, mm. Matt yeah, LeBlanc, yeah, don't talk yeah. back. As soon as I <laughs> that's what's playing. As soon as I saw um, Matt LeBlanc and the mother pull up to the apartment complex after their date, I knew the scene was coming. Yeah, the, the crazy, you know, uh, high speed scene of, of Ed and the little girl cleaning up the apartment and shoving everything in the closet and scrubbing the floors, and then they sit on the couch just in time as the parent, you know, uh, Matt LeBlanc and the mother come into the room. And of course, Matt LeBlanc opens like the, the closet and everything falls out. Ha ha ha! It, just, that was, that's the yeah. kind of movie this is. That's that's what it is. Yeah, and it's and with you're right. Ha ha ha! Is accurate because no one. I can't imagine anyone laughing, laughing at that. Yeah. That is. It's a long setup for a joke, and it is terribly timed. Yeah. Well, like everything in this movie is terribly. Oh well, yeah. But I so expect anything. So yeah. now everything in the movie is, is happy, and he's got a date, and he's doing better on the team, and the team's doing well. Then pennant race. Yeah. He's throwing and his so fastball course, finally. Yeah, so of course, have to worry about that Jim Caviezel. So of course, the yeah. nefarious Weasley owner's son comes up with this. I, I don't understand this plan. Ed is making tons of money for this team, yeah. bringing in tons of people. Amazing revenue. They're so winning. He, he decides not people coming from all over the country to see. I think they're trying to take a page from Rookie of the Year when they try to villainize the GM for trying to sell again. An unlikely uh, hero. Let's let's remind us of but better baseball movies. He, he <laughs> inst Much instead of yeah. he not only sell, uh, selling the, the the chimp to another team he. Organizes a kidnapping for the monkey. <laughs> like, oh, I love yeah. this. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. The I mean, monkey gets kidnapped as he's getting a drink out of a cooler. Like, it's all like and shadows, ominous head. shadows pass overhead. Wait, like, but, like, which wait, 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 wait. Here we go. Here we go. Ed hands one of the players, this a goofy character who is superstitious because baseball players are superstitious, right? So he, he hands him a cherry Coke and he says, oh, yes. No, no, Ed, we've got tropical flavored drinks in the cooler upstairs. So is this guy in on it? Because Ed, I was wondering Ed goes upstairs. upstairs Oh, is opening the cooler, and then two ominous shadows yeah. come up, and oh, yeah. and then all of a sudden, Matt LeBlanc like here's a here's a here's the chimp, <laughs> and he goes, oh my god, Ed is being kidnapped, and he runs upstairs to try to rescue him. Then the next day, it's like. It was like a reverse lassie. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. Gentlemen, yeah. gentlemen, come on over around. The the manager says we had to sell Ed, and everybody's like, what? Why? And it's like, wait a minute. If you sold Ed, why not start with that? Guys, we have to sell Ed. And then zookeepers come. Come on, we got to right. take Ed away. And then a tearful scene where the yeah. ape looks back at they Matt LeBlanc. They no, kidnap him. And, and they the, kidnap him. And the owner's him. son has like a suitcase of money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With, with like a dollar. And, and then he says to him, he has a dollar. Then he runs, then he runs up to him. We're well, not low on budget money, all right? I wish I wrote this down. Matt LeBlanc, Matt LeBlanc challenges the team's owner, who's this bizarre rich guy with a toupee. And he runs up to him. He gets, the owner's son, he walks up to him and he says, what did you do? Why did you sell Ed? And he says something to the effect of, I just made myself a lot of money. And then he gets in the car. Maybe someday you can make a lot of money too. And then he drives away. And they're driving and like, on the field too. And that was what I, and that was yeah. what I realized. That was when I realized exactly what Cody made a point of earlier. This monkey is making a crap load of money for your team. Why the hell did you sell him? And and here's this is evil. Here's yes. the thing that doesn't make. And Jack and I actually missed a part of the movie because we were discussing this. I, I don't understand the team who bought Ed what they're planning on doing because this here we this, go. This chimp makes tons of money for this team. You would think this team's like, oh, let's bring him in to our team and we'll make tons of money. Instead, they dress him like a clown. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, we have to get they, to the extraction they, mission now. They lock him in a cage, and they have two thugs electrocuting him. Torturing, <laughs> again. Torturing him. Yeah. What, another another great concept it, for a kids' movie. It, Torture yeah. is interesting. But that is why, sense. Why that just that cruelty? And the electrocution is like a magneto-electrocution thing. There's like spark. These, See, that's just yeah, like yeah. sparks like... 
flowing through the whole cage like it's a like an electrical ball conduit. Stroking. They threw him in. But yeah. why would this team buy a baseball right. playing monkey and then just torture it and use him as a clown? I don't. Yeah. So yeah, Matt LeBlanc discovers this oh, when he, he decides he's got to go in and steal Ed. In and somehow he gains scene. entrance. As, which, which, this sequence way, never ends. Which, by the way, Brian's got a good point. He's guilted into doing by the, the woman and her daughter because he wasn't. Yeah. He's like, that. Oh, yeah, that was a great Look, scene in the diner. Yeah. They were yep. talking about getting Ed back, and he's like, "What do you want me to do?" Like, fine. I hope if I ever get kidnapped, yeah. that you make a better effort yeah, for me. He's, in, he's like, "What do you want me to do?" They're like. Get get him back. Actually, I think I think that is what we want you to do. Is we want you to get him back. Oh oh oh. Okay okay. But it's not yeah. like he was kidnapped. He was sold. The other team owns and him. And LeBlanc had no like idea that he was being inexplicably tortured by two random generic looking biker thugs in the basement of a baseball stadium. So they, yeah, so it's Matt a LeBlanc long... goes to the visiting stadium and somehow knows a security guard on so like a first guards, name basis. Yeah. Yeah. And somehow the security guard from the rival team is going to let the rival pitcher. Oh, because he left his glove. glove he left his glove in the go locker ahead. room. Well, I understand so you baseball players and your superstitions. Well, let, and let's skip because this sequence is forever. Matt LeBlanc bl- breaks Ed out. It becomes like the born identity all of a sudden. Well, he like well, takes he, on he, these two goons. Yeah, he knocks out the goons. The camera pans. Okay, so they. Ed gets out of the cage himself. The moment the electricity stream is cut off, he bends the bars and gets out. He, why didn't he do that the whole exactly. time? Exactly. So then Ed, so those goons right Ed there and Matt LeBlanc sticks. beat up the two thugs, again, with crazy zany sound effects and whoa, whoa, whoa type It thing. was a zany scene. Yeah. <laughs> and then they start to run away, and then they're like, oh my god, there's a janitor. Let's hide behind this corner. Wait a minute. You just kicked yeah. the crap out of two thugs. With well, he's an innocent bystander. You don't want to hurt the janitor. And a mo- uh, uh, it was bizarre. And it's bad. And it, you know, Ed gets out. He jumps into a truck full of yeah. frozen bananas. The entire movie, this this chair. Yeah, that is the best part. He's in a cage, getting electrocuted, getting like beat up by thugs. And what's the thing that undoes him? He goes in a frozen chocolate yeah. banana truck and, and gets like hypothermia. So then he follows. So the truck. he gets in the hospital. Yeah, skip over all that crap. Yeah, he goes no. to the hospital. Well, and yeah, yeah. Jack with hypothermia. Down the truck. He gets Ed out and and he's frozen. So they have to take him so, to the hospital. But they don't take him to a vet. They take him they to, take him to a, a human a hospital. A human hospital. <laughs> Which they treat like, him like a human, yeah, too. Yeah, he's hooked up to IVs. He's wearing a hospital gown. I mean, what's the theory there? That if you wear pants, you go to a human yeah. hospital? <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. This is a chimpanzee. It doesn't matter. So he's wearing trousers. So from this point, you know, a little girl says, okay, I'm going to stay with Ed. And they... Oh my God, Andy Wolf has yeah. arrived. Uh-oh. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Andy Wolf. I didn't mean to go away the next episode. Yeah. He was just blown away by his presence. We're yeah. interrupting the space time continuum. Like, but listen, so they go to the That's baseball an game, right there. and you know Matt LeBlanc is just inspired. His pal's in the hospital, and he's pitching. And then, of course, Ed wakes up from his coma. Him and the little girl go to the his ballpark. Coma. And, well, this and thing, Matt, he was in a coma. He was in a coma, but, but he wakes up, rips off. for him. Yeah. Now, just being in the back of a refrigerated uh, delivery van for about 20 minutes really warrant being in the hospital for, like, what, 24 hours under but, surveillance? But, with, uh, but how long was he in, with, uh, it, it with a, been, in a coma? You don't even know where he is. It could have been a day is. or it right, could have been two know. hours. It, it, the movie never really gives you an idea. <clears> You're talking about raising the stakes. I don't know if Ed just I checked in or if he was there for a week. So then, of course... Ed and the little girl steal an ambulance. And we leave that part. A great children's example yeah. here, yes. And yeah. drive, dr- I don't know who was driving. It must have been Ed because he drove the truck earlier. Yeah, probably. It certainly drove, wasn't the six year old girl. to the. Uh, they to made the it stadium. from like. And I thought that Ed was going to run on the field and, and play baseball and save the day, blah, blah, blah. But he just gets there and sits in the stands. And that inspires Matt LeBlanc to throw fast again. Which, by the way, okay, so Matt LeBlanc, yeah, he's throwing fast again. But the announcer like, oh, Deuce is really carrying this team. Which, and if you watch the yeah. other, he gave up like three <laughs> he, home yeah, runs. Yeah, he gave up three home runs, like and, four runs and in then, six innings. And then they're going to take yeah, him out of the game. Yeah, it's in the sixth inning, and they're winning 5-4. I'm like, that's like an ERA of almost like <laughs> seven or six. Like, that's yeah. not really. He was I love the, I love really the analysis of the baseball in this I'm movie. Like, this we need, yes. Someone needs to make up a box score. So not only yeah, is I was he, saying that, too. Right. He's giving them home run after so home run. not only is he not carrying the team, he actually kind of sucks. And, yeah. But no, he's the hero, and of course... So, so the manager thinks about taking him out, and naturally the closer like comes on the mound, assuming he's coming into the game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Arguing I'm for ready, a spot. Coach. 
And the most important thing about this game is Tommy Lasorda is in the stands. Oh, and, we and he's come specifically this. to see the chimp. Brian and I talked about this beforehand. Did anyone else get the feeling that Tommy Lasorda may or may not have known he was in a movie? <laughs> it was like Robert Loja. <laughs> it is. It's very documentary style. It was. It was it. Like, like he was on set randomly as like a baseball advisor or something. And hey, people know who you are. I feel like they brought him in and didn't tell him that he was going to be in a movie. Like this may all be a surprise to Tommy Lasorda. Yeah, it was Bowfinger style with Eddie Murphy. <laughs> yeah, Tommy. You're at a baseball game. Go. Yeah. Yeah. So, of course, and, oh, so of course uh, Jack wins the game. Or, you know, starts throwing well again. They win the game. Everything's happy. He kisses the girl. And I can't remember what happens. Well, Tommy Lasorda oh, says, oh, I'll yeah. this kid in Los yeah. Angeles tomorrow. Hey, what whatever happens he next? Wants. You bring a guy yeah. from, like, low A baseball to the big leagues yeah. after he gave up five runs in nine <laughs> exactly. minutes. Exactly. And, and he say, and he <laughs> How says, does that happen? And he says, pay him whatever he, whatever he wants. Pay yeah. him. Oh, yeah. and wait, one more. This is as bad as <laughs> I've seen There's enough. actual factual error in this game, too, where, as you remember, Matt LeBlanc walks the batter, and that's what prompts an almost bring the closer in. They're up by one. But yet the, the tobacco spitting guy who's at the plate is the game tying run. They totally mm. ignore the fact that he's the go ahead run. I'm again sportscaster thinking so. here, and I'm like, what are they talking about? He's the game winning run. Well, we should also mention that or the go guy, ahead, not game winning. The guy, the, the game announcer, is also doing play by play over the loudspeakers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's not <laughs> pitching too well today. <laughs> I don't know if he's going to be able to beat this guy. He took him deep the past three at bats, and Matt LeBlanc's like, God. <laughs> like, seriously, I'm pitching here. Yeah. And again, Tommy but Lasorda so, is just so the movie, no clues in this movie. The movie Tommy Lasorda movie, is a terrible yeah. scout. The movie closes out with, um, uh, you know, obviously Jack is now with the woman and, and, and the kid, and I think the monkey too. Yeah. And they drive away in the sunset. And the only good thing about this movie was at the end of the movie they played a Tom Waits song covered by the Ramones. That was the only. Oh yeah, because they're dragging him. They're dragging him. They're dragging him. Like, they're driving the truck, and they're pulling a trailer with a swing set. Right, on. right, And Ed's on the swing set. And Ed is swinging on the swing set, yeah. eating a frozen banana. that's safe. Okay. Oh, Those stupid frozen bananas that are in the whole movie that's frozen Those chocolate. Nanner, Those frozen bananas banana banana that nearly killed Ed, he is now enjoying at the end of the movie. Just give him, ah. a, yeah, give him a regular banana, some I nutrition. Know. I know. I was kind of hoping he'd be It's always on a sugar high. End, so, so are we going to do stop the movie moments now? I don't let's know what do, we are yeah, for we're time. Gonna do, uh, we're going to do th- a couple things here. We're going to do first our... Um, well, actually, let's let's not do stop the movie. I think we're just going to do the round table of... Was this so bad it's good? No. And go around no way. Of we'll, we'll take, all right, Nico, we're going to start with no. you as our honored guest. <laughs> Thank you. No, and, you know, one of the things, I'll reference over the topic, because that was a movie that was so bad that it was good. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Okay, but this movie I wanted to shut off about five times, and I'm not even being cruel here. Like, I'm just, it wasn't even, like, I, I'm a fan of the movies that are so bad they're good. But this one just wasn't, it was just to- horrible for the reasons you've heard the past 45 minutes. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, this This was a tough go. I, I think in a lot of ways, this is the biggest... I suggested this movie, and I'm apologizing to everyone here for it, because this not one accepted. was... Not accepted. It was a chore. <laughs> not, not accepted. accepted. Yeah. I do not accept it. I, I do not accept that, sir. Yeah. Um, uh, I would not recommend... This is not so bad it's good for me. This is just bad. I mean, there are moments of craziness that are moderately entertaining, like... Little peaks, but for the whole, it, it felt endless too. Oh yeah, it oh, felt yeah, it, was, so yeah it, was, it was like the first half hour. It felt one, like three I did stop hours. I at one point to, to check how much time there was left because it was just too much. I told Brian at one point I stopped because I'm like, okay, I, I'm I'm guessing I'm about. I thought I was about 50 minutes in. I was 25 minutes. That's yeah. what it was. I, so. I was to the point where I was literally counting down. I was watching it on Netflix and it tells you how much is left in the movie. Right, right. I'm like, oh my god! I have a half hour. Are you kidding me? I'm like counting down. To well, the typically end. a movie structure is three acts, and because this movie cuts around so crazily, you don't know what act you're in at what time. Third act stuff happens. First act, first act yeah. stuff well, happens. Third and second. And uh, when I was watching with Jack, he he used uh, a term to describe which I think was perfect. Yeah. He said it was like uh, it was like a dream. Yeah, it was like yes. it was like I was you watching a dream, more like a like nightmare in a dream. Because things were so crazy, the editing was crazy. The monkey was wearing a clown costume, being electrocuted. It was almost like it you could like analyze this. Yeah, it was like you were yeah. watching it in a dream, and it was just too. I'm just it was enjoying. So I don't think it was. It was. It was so kind of. I felt at one point it was almost like David Lynch directed a Nickelodeon <laughs> movie. It was kind of what you were getting at times with this, and and let's, we're going to do two of our other segments. The first one. We're gonna do first. We're gonna do so wrong. It's right. The game we like to do, where we're gonna ask everyone here a question and yes. see if we can get it right. This is our, gonna be our first multiple choice. So oh wrong. God. It's oh right. My God. Okay. Am I included on this? You are included. I'm on excited this. about you that. You are definitely in on this. In 1996, 
This part will not surprise you. Ed was nominated for the Golden Raspberry Award for the worst film of 1996. <laughs> the so That's wrong nice. it's right question this week is, and I'm going to give you the other nominees, which film won for worst film of 1996? Here's your options. The Stupids, Striptease, Island of Dr. Moreau, that awful Marlon Brando Val Kilmer movie. I've seen it. Ed or Barb Wire, sometimes known to people as the Pamela Anderson movie. I know this, so I, I should, maybe I should abstain, or should okay. I? You should abstain. You know this okay. already. Wow. Okay, for yeah, those I've... who don't know it, the, the, those are your options. I'll go through them again. The Stupids, Island of Dr. Moreau, Ed, Barb Wire, or Striptease. Those are the nominees yeah. for Worst I Film gotta of go, 1996. I gotta go with my gut. I don't know the answer to this. I don't have the slightest clue. I'm gonna go with The Stupids. That's my gut. Okay. I'm going to say striptease. Okay, Coach. I've seen all these movies. I think by far Barb Wire is the worst of all of those choices. I'm going to go with Barb Wire. In Cody is correct. It was striptease. It was Barb Wire. I would actually agree with Jack though. Barb Wire may be the worst of the films in there. Or maybe boy, Island of Dr. Moreau. Island of Dr. Moreau is tough. It's tough. It is tough. I'll give you that. That is really bad. That's a movie that may show up on this one. And this is our other favorite part, Nico, where we okay. talk about reviews from IMDb or otherwise from people who enjoyed this film. Oh, jeez. And we're going to go first But doesn't this get 0%? This has a 0% of Rotten Tomatoes. I had to delve into IMDb ah, for all of these okay. reviews. Okay. Yeah. 0%. That's Zero on Rotten Tomatoes. Well, it's kind of pre-Rotten Tomatoes, so there aren't that many right. on there. But 0-0. Um, zero, zero. This one is from Seth on IMDb. Ooh, Seth. This is his review, the show. Um, and I, I just I, I want people to understand as I read this that every sentence in this review finishes with an exclamation point. Oh, that's so, like that Seinfeld okay, when Elaine yeah. makes her writing more interesting. So when I read this, I'm going to do my best to impart the exclamation point. Yeah, you got to use use the punctuation. Okay. The title is "The Chimp Plays Ball." That actually had three exclamation were there lots points. Of, where there's like a long A on that one. Ball. No. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Play ball. This movie definitely does not deserve the three strikes treatment. I've seen Wait, all... Wait, what's the three strikes treatment? I'm not sure. Okay. I think that just means... Yeah, I wasn't sure. Yeah, three right. strikes, you're out, Ed, or, you yeah. know. I've seen all those imported sport-playing animal movies, Air Bud, those others, but... And they are good! Ed is a fun, funny, cute flick that warms your hearts. Hearts. Does, does anyone else hear more than one like, heart? What is this like? I'm at the Moss Eisley Cantina watching yeah, this I with just, other species. I just have the one. If you, unless, you're do, unless, have unless you're Doctor Who, you're, you, you don't have you don't have two hearts. Oh my! There is God. no need to give this movie a low rating. <laughs> <laughs> All right, is this the director? Is this Matt LeBlanc? <laughs> Why would you put a question exclamation point after that? Hold on. If it's, you're thinking about giving this movie a low rating, no. Here it goes. Heck. There is no need to give an actor and his chimpanzee a fake five dollar trophy for a bad movie performance. Oh, I think what? they're Can referencing. Read that again? I think they're referencing the Razzie nomination. It says, "Heck, there is no need to give an actor and his chimpanzee a fake five dollar trophy for a bad movie performance." Oh, okay. He's okay. and he wraps wow. it up with That's a good point. Any movie with an animal playing one type of sport or another is a very clever idea, and all families will appreciate that idea as well. <laughs> as well. <laughs> Seth, we admire your enthusiasm, but we're afraid you were dead wrong. Are we allowed to swear on these podcasts? I won't, but... Yeah, unfortunately, but my, no. But you know it's in my head right <laughs> now. Yeah. yeah. Like, seriously? All right, there's... Uh, it's a WTF one, review right two there. Other, yeah. that's, that was the best review on IMDb. Here's oh, that another was awesome. one, uh, real quick. That was definitely Matt LeBlanc. <laughs> <laughs> or his mother. Or, no, this, yeah. this one. Yeah, maybe. No, this one may be from Matt LeBlanc. Uh, this review is from D, who says, This gets one star for the actual movie, but two stars because I like Matt LeBlanc. Mm. <laughs> I don't. What, I would. I don't really understand that. So one and a half. I yeah. Do they average? Yes. I don't. Mm. I don't know what it is, but personally, I hate movies with monkey co-stars. Always have. <laughs> It's just stupid. I don't find that fla that slapstick comedy funny. Mm. What a pain. I feel her. So I don't... Yeah, I don't... But then gives it two stars because of Matt LeBlanc. Mm. I don't know. Well, he really carried that I'm movie. a fan of this last I mean, without Matt LeBlanc, LeBlanc in this, this movie... Here? No, no, this last line of that review. Oh, yeah. The only exception I find is Congo, but it's not a comedy, thank God. <laughs> 
This so, was close to Congo. Yeah. So clearly this is like Air Bud writing this to go against his monkey That's counterpart. And That's I, right. I, I've seen Air Bud. Oh, you yeah. should watch Air Bud and do a comparison. Air Bud. So basically it's someone who likes Air Bud being like, you got to get me in more dramatic films, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this is our final review. This is from Charlie. Charlie. This was my favorite review of Ed. Um, oh, he says... I sleep late sometimes so my alarm goes <laughs> off at noon. Um, and Charlie says, I preferred it to the Truman Show. But that's just wacky old me. What, what does Charlie, the Truman Show have to do? Charlie, I'm going to give you a note on your Truman review. Show. I think you're talking about the Matt, Matthew McConaughey movie, Ed TV. Ah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. yes. But what that's the, a good point. But you yeah, know what? Yeah. There's not a lot of positive yeah, reviews for they both, Ed. Yeah, yeah, they both have... Yeah. So they, they had to steal Ed positive the, reviews from on different yeah. movies. They both okay. have Ed in the title. I see what he's kind Ed, of trying Ed to go for Ed will take this positive review, though. He'll take it where he can get it. yeah. Um, Can I just say right now, I just want to say this before we end the podcast, that oh watching God. this movie made me want to watch Major League, a good, funny oh, yeah. baseball movie. Especially that the I red enjoyed. tag in the locker scene. Especially like, the red oh. tag in the locker scene. I was like, oh, I wish I were watching Major League. Yeah, see, Major League had a cut day. Even a, even a Major League sequel. I would, I would rather see like Major back League to the minors. 2. Yeah, yeah the one with uh, what's this, Gus Cantrell. Yeah, yeah. I know that, but yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. Well, yeah. Well, that that is our episode this week. Nico, really excited to have you here. I, I was very Great excited job, to be Nicholas. here. And it, was, yeah. it was nice to... Thoughts that I was stewing over for the past eight hours, nine hours since I watched the movie. I was glad to get them all out here and just wow. Yeah, we'll have you in here again. You know, we, we won't limit you to sports movies. All right. You know, we'll you have know. you in here again. We're not going to typecast you. No, you, know, you have okay. a lot more to offer. Well, That's the thing. It, it's that. like that guy was saying about movies with monkeys playing sports. I mean, we've got to broaden that right, range. Right. They can do a lot more. Nico can do more. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. You, you bring me in to break down Ed, maybe I'll. We had to break down Congo. You know? Yeah, we not are just monkey sports. Wow. We are, we are going to limit All you. To, we are going to limit you to monkey movies. Yeah, so. right. no, yeah, yeah that's, I don't. That's... Yeah, Alex, I don't think made that clear the first yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, we're not going to limit you to sports movies, but they're all. Yeah, there's always going to be some be sort monkey. of animal, maybe yeah. dogs at some point. All right. yeah. Yeah. Animals, yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm going to give a quick tease to our next episode. V- really interesting episode coming up because normally on this show we're all blasting the bad movie we're watching. Not the episode, our next episode. One of us enjoys the movie that we are watching. And so I don't, we, I do not know (laughs) what's going to happen. Can I stay and watch this? Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen. This is unprecedented on the Stop the Movie podcast. And I'm I would, embarrassed right now. I, know, I'm, I am very You should be intrigued. ashamed of yourself. I'm very intrigued by what's going to happen next. Uh, and for updates, as always, you can find us on Facebook at uh, Stop the Movie. I want to get out. You can email us at uh, comments at stopthemoviepodcast.com. Some of us on Twitter. Uh, Jack? At, at J-A-C-K-E-S-T-A-B-R-O-O-K. You can follow my tweets as I watch these movies. I don't do all of them, and sometimes I do movies that do not appear on this podcast, but I uh, will give uh, updates as to when the next uh, tweet review will be. Ooh. Very good. Very good. But yeah, <laughs> please, uh, please like us on Facebook. And if you can also subscribe to this podcast on iTunes if you feel like giving us a positive review. If you liked Ed TV and you want to give us a positive <laughs> yes. review, we'll take it. Yeah, Truman Show. Yeah, Truman Show. Airbud, you know, we will Air take Ed. we will take Capote. positive reviews for mm-hmm. other movies. Truman Capote. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but that is it. We'll see you back here next time on Stop the Movie I Want to Get Out. Thanks. <laughs>